They say lightning never strikes the same place twice, but in horror, the second time can be even more terrifying. Get ready to dive deep into the darkest corners of cinema as we count down the top 10 horror sequels that prove sometimes the follow-ups can live up to the originals. We're talking sequels that didn't just meet expectations, they slashed them to pieces. Let's see which sequels reign supreme on this episode of Ranking Rumble. Welcome back to WWH, my name is Andrew Dreamer. Back in June, we looked at some of the worst horror sequels of all time, and just like we did with the remakes, we've got to look at the other side of the coin. And when you're done watching this video, you should go check out those. I think they're pretty good. Horror sequels often carry a notorious reputation, unfairly burdened by the weight of their predecessors. The success of an original horror film can cast a long shadow, creating sky-high expectations that are difficult for any sequel to match. Sequels are often accused of being mere cash grabs, sacrificing originality and fear for cheap thrills and jump scares. The law of diminishing returns also plays a role. As franchises continue, the novelty and fear factor can wear thin, leaving audiences feeling jaded and unimpressed. Despite this stigma, many horror sequels have defied the odds, delivering fresh scares, expanding the lore of their respective universes, and sometimes even surpassing the originals in terms of quality and impact. These sequels demonstrate that the horror genre is capable of evolution and reinvention, proving that a second, third, or even fourth installment can still be a terrifying and worthwhile experience. It's time to look beyond the reputation and give these sequels a chance to prove their worth. So, grab your popcorn and make your way to your seat. Let's head down to the ring. Starting us off at number 10 is Blade 2. Directed by Guillermo del Toro, this movie stands as a shining example of a horror sequel done right. It builds upon the foundation of its predecessor, expanding the vampire mythology while delivering a fresh and thrilling cinematic experience. Del Toro's unique visual style and penchant for gothic horror infuse the film with a dark and atmospheric beauty, setting it apart from other action horror hybrids. The film's success also lies in its characters and performances. Wesley Snipes returns as the iconic Blade, his stoic demeanor and impressive fighting skills making him a compelling anti-hero. The addition of the Blood Pack, a group of vampire assassins, introduces a new dynamic to the story, and the film's villain, Nomak, is a truly terrifying and formidable foe. Blade II's blend of action, horror, and stylish visuals, along with its strong characters and performances, make it a worthy successor to the original and a standout entry in the vampire subgenre. Coming in next at number 9 is Saw X. The latest installment in the Saw franchise marks a thrilling return to form for the series, serving as both a compelling sequel and a clever midquel that bridges the gap between the first and second films. By refocusing on John Kramer's twisted morality and his intricate traps, the film reignites the core elements that made the original Saw so impactful. Tobin Bell's reprisal of the iconic Jigsaw role brings a chilling gravitas to the film, reminding audiences of the character's complex motivations and the visceral horror he inflicts on those he deems deserving of his games. Saw X successfully balances the franchise's signature gore with a more psychological approach, delving deeper into John Kramer's backstory and the events that shaped him. This exploration adds depth to the narrative, making John's actions more understandable. The film's traps are as gruesomely inventive as ever, each one designed to test the victim's morality and force them to confront their past transgressions. By the way, don't forget to body slam that subscribe button so you never miss any of the heart-pounding, chill-inducing five-star matches we have here at WWH. We're not just wrestling with horror, we're delivering it to your screen every week. Next up at number 8, we have Child's Play 2. This movie excels as a horror sequel by amplifying the terror and suspense of the original while maintaining the darkly comedic tone that made Chucky such a memorable villain in the first place. The film wastes no time in re-establishing the threat of the possessed good guy doll, picking up shortly after the events of the first movie and thrusting Andy Barkley back into a nightmare scenario. 
The relentless pursuit by Chucky, fueled by his unwavering desire to transfer his soul into Andy, creates a constant sense of dread that permeates the entire film. The sequel also benefits from a more expansive setting, taking the third act into a toy factory, providing a visually striking and thematically appropriate backdrop for Chucky's reign of terror. Brad Dourif's iconic voice performance as Chucky once again brings the character to life injecting him with equal parts menace and twisted humor. This is by far my favorite entry in the franchise, and that comes down to that killer third act, and honestly the inclusion of Kyle, a character that most fans seem to love quite a bit. Number seven in this ranking rumble is Aliens. James Cameron's Aliens is a masterclass in crafting a worthy horror sequel, expanding upon the claustrophobic terror of Ridley Scott's original, while forging its own distinct identity. It shifts gears from pure horror to a thrilling action horror hybrid, amplifying the stakes and introducing a relentless onslaught of xenomorph threats. This escalation in scale and intensity creates a visceral experience that keeps you on edge. The introduction of the Colonial Marines, a group of hardened soldiers, adds another layer of tension and complexity to the narrative. Sigourney Weaver's return as Ripley, now a battle-hardened survivor anchors the film and provides a powerful emotional core. Her fierce determination to protect Newt, a young girl orphaned by the xenomorphs, elevates the story beyond mere survival and adds a poignant human element. Get away from her, you bitch! The film's iconic creature design, pulse-pounding action sequences, and unforgettable performances cement Aliens as not only a great horror sequel, but a landmark in science fiction cinema. Our number six entrant is going to be Final Destination 2. And honestly, that's because I have a lot of nostalgia for this particular entry in the franchise. I mean, this movie is the reason we all avoid log trucks when we're on the highway. This film expands the mythology of death's design, showcasing its relentless pursuit of those who have evaded their predetermined fate. The film's opening sequence, that spectacular highway pileup, sets the stage for the gruesome and inventive deaths that follow, each one a meticulously crafted exercise in tension and shock value. The sequel introduces a new group of characters, each with their own unique connection to the initial premonition, further exploring the themes of fate and free will. Allie Larder's portrayal of Clear Rivers, a survivor from the first film, adds a sense of continuity to the movie. The film's clever foreshadowing and intricate set pieces create a constant sense of unease, leaving you guessing who will be the next victim and how death will claim them. With its blend of thrilling action, suspenseful storytelling, and gruesome deaths, Final Destination 2 stands as a worthy successor to the original. Number 5 in this ranking rumble is Evil Dead 2. This movie is a prime example of a horror sequel that not only surpasses its predecessor in my opinion, but also redefines the genre with its unique blend of over-the-top gore, slapstick comedy, and sheer unadulterated terror. The film takes the basic premise of the original, people trapped in a cabin battling demonic forces, and injects it with a manic energy. I mean, it's basically a retelling of the original film in sequel form, if that makes sense. Bruce Campbell's iconic performance as Ash Williams is a tour de force of physical comedy and horror heroism. His transformation from a hapless victim to a chainsaw-wielding, wise-cracking badass is both hilarious and exhilarating. The film's practical effects from the stop-motion animation of the possessed objects to the gallons of blood and guts are both gruesome and delightfully absurd. Sam Raimi's masterful camera work with its swooping tracking shots and dynamic angles add to the film's frenetic pace and visual inventiveness. Evil Dead 2 is a testament to the power of horror to entertain, terrify, and make us laugh at the same time. Coming in at number 4 is A Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Dream Warriors revitalizes the franchise by delving deeper into the mythology of Freddy Krueger while introducing a group of resourceful teenagers who fight back against the Dream Demon. The film successfully balances the series' signature blend of horror and dark humor, creating a thrilling and often surprisingly emotional experience. This isn't the first time this has been said, but this really is that perfect balance of horror and comedy for Freddy. 
The film's special effects are some of the most inventive and memorable in the entire franchise, showcasing Freddy's sadistic creativity and the Dream Warriors' own unique abilities. The ensemble cast, including a young Patricia Arquette, delivers strong performances, making the characters relatable and their struggles against Freddy all the more compelling. The film also marks the return of Nancy Thompson after being absent from the second film. With its mix of imaginative scares, engaging characters, and a satisfyingly dark ending, Dream Warriors stands as a high point in the franchise and a testament to the enduring power of Freddy Krueger. At number three, we have The Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Before I really dive into this one, I want to say, this is completely a personal preference. I can understand why people would not like this movie. I mean, it's, it's essentially a spoof of the first film, and I am in no way saying the second outing of the Sawyer family is better than the first, or even close, really. But for some reason, I've always had love for this film. It's been stated for years, even by Toby Hooper himself, that the first TCM was meant to be a dark comedy. And yeah, there's some discourse online about whether this was meant as a joke, but I tend to believe Hooper. And when he returned in 1986 for the sequel, he made 100% sure that everybody would see the comedy. It's so over the top and goofy, but it's fun. Chop Top is my favorite character in this entire franchise outside of Leatherface. And Caroline Williams as Stretch is amazing as well. As much comedy as is in this movie, there is still some genuine horror too. You've got good special effects and a scary but fun atmosphere. This movie is just an hour and 41 minutes of a good time. Coming in at number two is Psycho 2. Psycho 2 is a surprisingly effective horror sequel, managing to recapture a bit of the suspense and psychological terror of the original, while also offering a fresh and intriguing continuation of Norman Bates' story. The film cleverly plays with the audience expectations, constantly blurring the lines between sanity and madness, leaving you questioning Norman's true state of mind. Anthony Perkins delivers a captivating performance, portraying Norman's fragile psyche with a mix of vulnerability and simmering darkness. The film's gothic atmosphere and suspenseful set pieces, including a tense shower scene callback, effectively build tension. The introduction of new characters, such as the mysterious Mary Samuels, adds another layer of intrigue to the plot. And the film's twist ending is both shocking and pretty satisfying. Psycho 2 successfully navigates the challenge of revisiting an iconic horror story and honors the legacy of the original while standing on its own merits. I know this movie is finally starting to get recognized a little more, but I will forever champion it. Don't hate me, but I kind of prefer this one over the original. <gasps> did he just say, I, he did? All right, it's time to unveil our final entrant in this ranking rumble. Coming in at number one is Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Though this wasn't actually the final chapter, but hey, money talks. Way to go, a-hole! Despite the misleading title, this is my favorite entry in the entire franchise, from the tone to the kills to the characters. The first four Friday the 13th movies are basically all trying to achieve the same thing. It's like they're all telling a different version of the same story, and this is the one where they got it near perfect, in my opinion. In this movie, you have Corey Feldman, Crispin Glover, and Ted White, who plays Jason, and he's actually my favorite favorite Jason as well. He portrays the character in such a terrifying way. He's brutal, swift, and unrelenting. And of course, I can't forget to mention Tom Savini, who brings some of his best work to this film in the effects department. I also love that this movie doesn't take itself too seriously. There are quite a few goofy moments in the film, like this. Or this. But these are the moments that make me love the movie. Because when it comes time for the killing, it is absolutely terrifying. And I know there are a few other movies that seem to be at the top of a lot of people's lists, but it's this one for me. It's everything I want in a Friday the 13th movie, and that is why it is my favorite horror sequel of all time. But there you have it. Those are my top 10 horror sequels. Let me know down in the comments which sequels are your favorite. 
If you're interested in Redcon One products, I do have a discount code you can use to save 20% on your order. All of my merch is available at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Andrew Dreamer. And if you would like to support the channel in any way, check out my Patreon page. All of the links are down in the description. Also, if you enjoyed this look at some great horror sequels, be sure to like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel so you never miss any of the action here at WWH. And remember, in the squared circle of horror, there are no countouts for nightmares. My name is Andrew Dreamer, and this is Wrestling With Horror.